Uh, my name is Alban, and uh, today for this uh, quick lightning talk, I'm going to give you the state of PyTorch presentation. So, uh, those of you uh, who are, have been at the conference before, maybe you have uh, seen similar uh, iterations of this talk. We are doing it every year. Joe here uh, did it last year. What we're saying is, yes, state of PyTorch, uh, where we're talking about everything that has happened this year, uh, some numbers and some uh, call for actions for you to help us. Um, so those of you that don't know me, I'm Albin. I've been working on PyTorch for quite a long time, and I'm a software engineer at Meta. Uh, and I work a lot on the maintenance of uh, core libraries for PyTorch. So the three big things I want to talk about today, uh, three of the big PyTorch milestones and uh, what happened this year, all the big events that we had, uh, PyTorch in numbers, so some interesting numbers. Joe, I uh, gave you uh, a sneak peek at a couple of these, but uh, it's always fun to, to see these things. And uh, a call to action for everyone on like, how, to, how can you get involved and uh, how can you help us build PyTorch? So uh, first and a big PyTorch milestone was uh, PyTorch 2.0 that was released earlier this year. Um, we got more than 20 million downloads across all platforms, so it's a pretty significant release for us. Uh, and the number of downloads are keep, keep increasing. Um, it adds a bunch of very important feature, Torch Compile. I don't think I need to go over it again because uh, we've talked about it. We're going to talk about it more. Um, an important one was uh, the MPS backend. So, uh, to leverage the GPU part of the M1, M2 chip from Apple is now in beta phase, so with a lot more coverage, a lot more stability, a lot more new features supported. Uh, Torch with Funk, uh, which was Funk Torch for the people that know about this, it's adding a functional API uh, similar to what Jax has, for example, uh, but staying within the PyTorch world, so executing in Eager and working with all the other features that uh, you might want to use within PyTorch. Uh, set default device, which I don't know if many of you are familiar with. It's all about changing what is a default device being used when you build your PyTorch model, create your model. That can help significantly to speed up initialization, for example, by directly initializing on device. Or as you've seen in some of the keynote example very quickly, you can use the meta device, which is a fake device with no data, to skip the initialization of your model altogether and then you can just load your weights. So that avoids having too much memory, doing unnecessary initialization, all these kind of things. And finally, better transformer, which was a big push uh, by many people on the PyTorch team and many of the maintainers to improve transformer models within PyTorch. And that has been both with very high level uh, API, new, uh, new features like that, and also low level implementations and allowing everyone to use all the best implementations you might have for these things. Um, another important milestone that I wanted to mention is the spring docathon that happened this year, where we had uh, 27 participants. Uh, we had 45 plus PRs merged and closing 53 issues. So it was very helpful in improving our tutorial, tutorials sorry, repo and improving uh, the quality, adding new tutorials, and uh, making sure that we have all the up-to-date tutorials. And finally, as uh, Joe mentioned and Ibrahim earlier, uh, this has been the first year of the foundation, and it was open to new membership in June this year. So it's very exciting to see that we already have, at the time of writing, four new members, and now we have two more. So it, it keeps growing faster than I can make slides. Um, and I would say I'm especially uh, excited about the fact that on the diversity of members we are getting. So as IBM and Intel, you can see uh, low-level components, new backends, but Hugging Face and Graph War are much more high-level and, and user-facing. So it's very exciting to see that, that we're growing in all directions with the foundation and uh, hopefully uh, the most exciting ecosystem possible. Um, and so now, for a couple of numbers, um, for those who are following the code base, uh, we had 12,000 commits uh, in the past year. 
And uh, we're very happy to see an 8% increase in open source contribution, where we mean open sources from outside of the usual core maintainers. And on the right side, you have this very interesting graph of how many commits we have in the repo every year. And as you can see, it's growing quite a bit, so more and more is happening. And all of that is done by all the contributors we have. And this year, we have 1,128 contributors that contributed to the repo. So that is 10% more than last year, and it's very, very exciting to see so many people uh, working on this. I left a couple names here from the people that did the most number of commits and that are uh, you know, very active. But of course, a lot of people do a small number of commits and they are uh, very important into uh, making sure we have a big diversity of contribution and, and improvements in the code base. And uh, what all of that enables is like 600,000 plus repos on GitHub that's used by Torch which is a 20% growth year over year. So it's very exciting to see more and more people are actually using PyTorch and publishing code that leverages PyTorch these days. And most of that comes from research and, uh, and PyTorch is still driving a lot of the A, uh, state of the art AI research. Uh, there are 7,000 new pairs of GitHub repo plus research paper that have been published this year. And still 60% of the AI research implement Py uses PyTorch for their implementation. So it's very exciting to, to see a very open and thriving ecosystem in, in the research. And what it translates to these days is also a significant pickup on the industry side, uh, which has been lagging before and now is actually picking up a lot of pace. So from some LinkedIn statistics, for example, we see a 50% increase year over year of people that say that PyTorch is, is a core skill and they want more, and, uh, and new jobs that also require PyTorch. And all of that comes from the general huge community that we have, and uh, some of the fun numbers we have related to that are the numbers for our Discuss forum, which is the main place where users, developers, and everyone goes to Discuss, where we have around 400 new people every month that come and comment there with more than 2 million page views. So it's a very, very active website with about 2,000 posts every month. So very active. We need a lot of people to answer all these questions. Um, and so that's where my call for action comes from. So uh, join us. You know, PyTorch is an open source project. This is what we are fighting for and making sure with the foundation, this is a big community. Um, so we did a bunch of work to try and uh, consolidate a lot of that. I don't know if you saw the poster yesterday uh, with a lot of super good feedback on how we can help people uh, come in and help us with PyTorch. So we have this new landing page, which is the ultimate guide to PyTorch contributions. Uh, please go and check it out. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can get involved. And the first thing I want to bring up there are many non-code contributions. So contributing to PyTorch is not just about writing code, it's about many other things. And here on the left, you can see the forums that I mentioned before. We have a dev discuss, we have a discuss forum, where posting questions, answering questions, and discussing with the community is a very significant work that you can do and anyone can do. Also, we are building PyTorch for everyone in the community. And so reporting issues, proposing new features are significant contributions you can give. Like we are looking for more feedback for all the features we're writing. I'm sure you've heard a lot about Torch Compile. You've heard a lot about many other features today. Um, give us feedback, tell us what doesn't work, what works well, and what you want to see. And of course, code contributions, uh, as, as many of you might know, uh, the first point here, I think, is especially interesting for people because uh, it's not something you will always think about, but helping reproduce and investigate issue is a very, very helpful thing you can be doing, even if you are not writing code, uh, because a lot of these are relatively time consuming and, uh, and it's a very fun thing. I know for many years when I was contributing to PyTorch, the first thing I was doing is just debugging issues and answering questions on the forum. 
Um, so it's very fun to do, and it's also very helpful because once we know exactly what the problem is, it's a lot simpler to do to the next stage, which is, well, doing bug fix and uh, and feature and actually sending a pull request to fix things. But in PyTorch these days, the part about sending the pull request is, in a lot of cases, the actual fastest part. And figuring out what needs to be done is, is actually the hard part. Um, and the third point is, like, uh, I would encourage anyone that is interested to send a bunch of code, but also help us review code and help us maintain the PyTorch code base. So with the foundation being fully open now, we uh, have many people from many different places that help us maintain different subsets of the library. And so I would recommend and uh, encourage anyone who is interested to, uh, to participate there. And finally, uh, documentation changes. I'm sure a lot of you know our doc website, our tutorials website. We have many documentation that we are working harder and harder on. Uh, and any contribution on that, on that end is welcome. And to that point, uh, for those who haven't seen it yet, we are doing a docathon next month uh, that is going to be about the PyTorch, PyTorch documentations. Um, if you are interested in collaborating with us, learning new skills, and uh, get a bunch of recognition for all the things you uh, might want to do, uh, go to our blog post. We have an announcement blog post where you can register. So if you are interested in participating and uh, you want a slightly more structured way to do your first contribution, I would highly recommend these kind of events uh, where you have a curated list of issues and tasks to do, and uh, hopefully you'll have all the support you need to, uh, to achieve that. And uh, that is basically all I had. So if you are interested, the first step, we have this amazing landing page. And uh, thank you, everyone uh, who participated, who sent PRs, who answered questions on the forum, and uh, who participated in PyTorch.